But until we have a convincing prospect of controlling inflation, I will oppose any further reductions in federal income taxes. To keep the government to a manageable size, I'm ordering tonight a cut in federal hiring. This order will mean a reduction of more than 20,000 in the number of permanent federal employees already budgeted for this fiscal year and will cut the total size of the federal workforce. I've already placed a 5.5% cap on the pay increase for federal employees and federal executive officers are receiving no pay increases at all. It's not enough just to control government deficits, spending, and hiring. We must also control the costs of government regulations. Come on, man. Today is Thursday, October 14th. This is a recap for the stock market activities today. The market is obviously rebounding higher in a relief rally, a sucker's rally, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter to me. The terminologies don't matter to me. What matters is the technicals were inviting. The technicals were set up for a market rebound, a big one. We got it today and the likelihood is it will continue for a little while. And of course, in yesterday's video, I said with a high degree of confidence that there is a relief rally coming for the stock market. No question mark here. You see us YouTubers, financial YouTubers, we use question marks. Is the market about to pop? Is the market about to crash? Question mark. And this is uh, our insurance policy. In case we get it wrong, you just say, you know what? I was asking question. I didn't say it will happen. God forbid somebody gets something wrong once in a while, right? God forbid somebody's a human being after all. But as you can see, I also released a video discussing the issue of inflation and how it is evolving from an economic crisis to a political one impacting President Joe Biden and hitting him hard. Even though this is not the Biden inflation, this is the Jerome Powell inflation. And as you can see, Jerome Powell is hiding in the back. Nobody's paying attention to him. Nobody's talking about him, even though this is his creation. But it doesn't matter anyways. I already predicted this a long time ago, that Biden will eat the blame for inflation. Even though you and I know inflation is always always a monetary phenomenon. But if you watch Fox News these days, you know, Sean Hannity, when he's not smoking during the commercial breaks, all they talk about is inflation, 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 inflation. And now they call it the Biden inflation. And these shots are landing big time. In a few weeks or so, the public opinion will shift to blame Biden for the inflation. It is politically smart and these shots will land, Biden will get blamed, and the result will be reducing infrastructure spending and other form of drugs that the market based this rally upon. Now, what does that mean? It means that the market at some point will have to come to face the music, that the infrastructure bill will be smaller than anticipated. All the hopes and dreams that built this rally higher at a whack are disappearing, meaning the market will have to price out all of these hopes and dreams that built the rally. So for now, the market is rebounding, but the long-term trajectory remains bearish for now. Of course, when you watch CNN these days, what are they talking about? Are they talking about inflation? Of course not. They're talking about Trump, 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 don't lose sight of the origins of this inflation, which is the reckless monetary policy that has been going on for years and years and years. Of course, I'm going to talk about all of these issues and a lot more in the headlines of the day video, which could be released this evening or perhaps tomorrow. I'm not going to make any promises because I don't like to break them. Of course, my wife responds to that by saying, really? But anyways, in the headlines of the day video, I'm going to take you back to the 1970s. We're going to go back and revisit the Nixon administration, the Ford administration, all the way to the Carter 
administration. And I will share with you rare news articles, video clips, because all of these presidents tried over and over and over and over again with aggressive measures to control inflation back in the 70s. The problem is all of them failed. At the end of the day, the resolution for the inflation in the 1970s came from the monetary policy, not the fiscal policy. That aside, back to the market, what are we expecting for the market action tomorrow? The answer is options expiration. I'm going to go over the options grid for the NASDAQ. We will try to find out where the market maker is trying to park the charts tomorrow. The hint is in the maximum pain region. The question is, where is the maximum pain region? We're going to answer that in the charts analysis. Also stick around for the futures analysis because I have the key in solving the natural gas crisis. And without further ado, let's move on to the market's coverage today. And here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the green by 534.75 points or a gain of 1.56%. The Nasdaq closing in the green by 251.80 points or a gain of 1.73%. The S&P 500 also closing in the green by 74.46 points or a gain of 1.71%. And what about the sector's performance today? At number one, capturing the gold medal materials and at number two for the silver technology and number three for the bronze industrials we're not going to shame any sector of the market today because every single sector of the market closed in the green it was the technical rebound the tide that lifted all boats and what about the advance to decline ratios the nyse 76 percent advancing versus 22 percent declining the nasdaq 63 percent advancing versus 34 percent declining moving on to futures what's going on here lighting up green across the board the dollar is down and of course commodities are taking the hint and they're moving higher and this is by the way a cause for concern because commodities specifically energy commodities crude and natural gas be moving higher as the dollar was surging and now as the dollar tops perhaps we're not sure yet but if it is and the dollar starts to trade down this will add more fuel to the fire in the rally in energy so these predictions that oil prices will reach 100 bucks a barrel they're not crazy at all if anything they're rational reasonable and likely today crude oil prices closed above one percent gains for both the wti and brent and the rally natural gas goes on although closing at the lows of the day is it a top is it not a top i see some weakness here but the momentum remains relentless in natural gas and the reason is we have a lot of shorts to cover here and we continue to get bad news after bad news after bad news and if the winter season is too cold natural gas will explode higher but perhaps we have some relief inside here because the man who holds the key to control this inflation because the poster boy for inflation right now is natural gas and the man with the key to curb this inflation is russian president vladimir putin and we now know what president putin really wants because uh, he made a comment to a CNBC anchor. He described her as too beautiful and pretty to understand his point. And of course, Mr. Putin is being accused of sexism. But perhaps this lady right here holds the answer to the energy crisis that is crippling the world's economy. Her name is Hadley Gambler or Gamble. And I don't know, you tell me, because it appears that President Putin is smitten by this lady. She can make good memes, that I can say. But all I know is Putin is looking and he's liking. Even his uh, holiness, the Pope, is also liking. In nomine patris. Let me give you some uh, holy communion, lady. I know what you're going to say. His holiness will never do something like that. This is blasphemy. Forget about it. The Pope is also human and he's looking and he's liking, literally. So perhaps this lady holds the key to solve the worldwide energy crisis. But until then, natural gas prices continue to rise higher and higher and higher. What about softs? We have declines for sugar and cocoa futures. Likewise, OJ futures pretty much at the flat line. While well, we have gains led by cotton, here's another short squeeze. Cotton prices continue to rise higher and higher and higher. And then we have gains for lumber and coffee futures. Watch out for lumber here. Lumber prices are rising higher in a silent rally, probably led by short covering. It doesn't matter anyways, because now we know for sure. 
that inflation is not transitory and the Fed admits it's not transitory. So what does that mean for lumber prices? They are probably going higher and higher and higher again. What about metals? The dollar is slightly down and therefore metals are rallying higher. Gold up, silver up, platinum up copper up palladium up everything is trading in the green although gold is lagging the rally in other meadows what about meats the prices of live and feeder cattle futures are moving higher and they're about to explode higher mark my words meanwhile the rally in lean hawks futures is taking a break here with another day of declines of about 1% or so. On the other hand, grains futures are exploding higher, led by a rally in soybean oil futures, but pretty much every commodity here in grains also rising higher, whether we're talking about soybeans, wheat, corn, rough rice, oats, canola, all rising higher. Folks, this inflation is starting to become really scary. When I did the research for the other video, back to the 70s, things got a little scarier because the same bullshit excuses that we're using right now of transitory and it's going to go away and it is a supply chain issue all of these excuses were used before and they failed likewise all the remedies that we're trying to use right now with the president allowing ports to operate 24 7 embarking at retailers like walmart and home depot to speed it up the shortage of truckers, union strikes. I mean, it's starting to look exactly as the 1970s stagflation era. God help us. Perhaps we need His Holiness to give us a like. Although I'd like to see His Holiness portfolio, he's probably also yellowing stocks and options too. Speaking of options, we're moving on to the big casino, the options market, and let's see what's going on here. At number one, the hottest table in the casino today is, you guessed it, Apple. With about 1 million contracts traded today, about 63% of those were calls. And at number two, AMC, and the volume is climbing higher. What does that mean? It is about to move higher. They're buying calls, lots of them. About 850,000 contracts traded today. About 72% of those were calls. We spotted the bullishness in AMC yesterday, and now we have a lot of options traders also buying a lot of calls, which will likely push the stock higher. And here it is at number three, Tesla, the souffle. With a little over 800,000 contracts traded today, about 43% of those were calls. They continue to buy puts over and over and over again on this name, and they continue to fail over and over and over again. The so-called whale, they're not going to let you win. They have a destination in mind. They want to push the stock higher to a certain price to achieve their own objective. Whatever that objective is, we don't know. At some point, the stock will break. It will probably break when all of these bears betting against Tesla face capitulation and they start covering and abandoning buying put options again. Then the stock will break. Moving on to the unusual activities that took place in the options market today. What's going on here with the ticker SKX? This is for Skechers, the shoe brand. Somebody's buying calls here. The name is oversold. It rebounded higher today and the rebound will likely continue. Somebody's buying the 49 calls for the expiration date, November 19th, with expectations that the name will pop higher by more than 12% by then. They paid about one buck and 20 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all spending about two million dollars and what about the trade for the ticker amc they're buying calls here the 45 calls for the expiration date october 22nd meaning next week with the expectations that the name will pop higher by more than 12 and a half percent by then and they paid about 70 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all spending about one million dollars what about the trade for the ticker pags this is a brazilian software company they continue to buy calls in this name over and over and over again in this case they're buying the 37 and a half calls for the expiration date december 17th with the expectations that the name will pop higher by more than seven percent by then they paid about two bucks and a half a piece to enter this trade all in all spending about two and a half million dollars and what about the trade for the ticker spy for the s&p 500 they're buying puts here the 390 puts for the expiration date november 22nd with the expectations that the spy could drop by more than 12 percent by then they paid about one buck and 10 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all spending about one million dollars what about the trade for the ticker apa this is for apa corporation 
oil and gas. This is a high beta name and therefore they're buying the 30 bucks calls for the expiration date November 19th with the expectations that the name will pop higher by more than 15% by then. They paid about 70 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $550,000. And what about the trade at the bottom of the table, the ticker OIH, this is the oil and gas ETF, among many other ETFs for oil and gas. This tends to be a high beta ETF. It includes the smaller oil and gas producers, which tend to move and swing in a wider range than say the XLE or even the XOP. In this case, they're buying the 265 calls for the expiration date, December 17th, with the expectations that the name will pop higher by more than 20.5% by then. They paid about three bucks and 70 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $2.2 million. Continuing with interest in trades, what about the trade for the ticker NVTA? This is a medical company, and they're betting for more upside here for this name by buying the 30 bucks calls for the expiration date, November 19th, with the expectations that the name could pop higher by more than 8% by then. They paid all about one buck and 10 cents a piece, all in all, spending about half a million dollars for this trade. What about the trade for the ticker IWM for the Russell 2000? They're buying puts here, interesting, the 213 puts for the expiration date, December 17th, with the expectations that the Russell 2000 could drop by more than 5.5% by then. They paid about 4 bucks a piece to enter this trade, all in all, spending about $2 million. Lastly, what about the trade for the ticker WHR for Whirlpool? The prices of washing machines and home appliances are going higher and higher and higher. At some point, prices will become too high and consumers will stop buying them. And therefore, somebody's buying puts here, the 190 puts, the expiration date, October 22nd, with expectations that the name could drop by more than 7% by then. They paid about two bucks a piece to enter this trade, all in all, spending about $1 million. Moving on to the heat map analysis, once again, the technical rebound that was the tide that lifted all boats. The majority of names traded higher, specifically the names that I showed you yesterday. The names that got hit the most are rebounding the the most. We're talking about names in the tech, chips, software, industrials, metals, healthcare, all rebounding higher. REITs and utilities also rebounding higher. These names got hit hard in the past month as interest rates went higher. Another notable mention here is Moderna surging higher today. Of course, the name was beaten severely in the last few days and weeks, but it is moving higher due to short covering for now and some good news. And I say that sarcastically, of course, because we have another flip-flop from the FDA. Yesterday, they did not recommend Moderna booster shots. Today, they're recommending Moderna booster shots, and therefore the stock is moving higher. The problem is that the reputational damage for Moderna is already done. As you can see, it was a trend that when Pfizer shots go higher, Moderna follows. But since the summer, Pfizer shots have been increasing while Moderna pretty much staying static. And as of late, when the FDA approved the Pfizer shot, not the Moderna shot, we're seeing increasing jab numbers for Pfizer, but not Moderna. So this relationship has been broken and therefore I remain bearish in the stock because for now the majority will choose Pfizer over Moderna, be it the FDA approval, be it the studies from Scandinavia, not recommending the Moderna shot for anyone under 30, etc, etc, etc. So I see more pain here for the name, even though it rebounded higher today, it will be a dead cat bounce and the name will continue to trade down in the days and weeks to come. Another name I'm watching is Deer, the ticker DE, and the reason is the strike. Over 10,000 workers, union workers, are striking against Deer. This creates an opportunity, by the way, because the stock is already beaten down. At some point, the management of Deer will have to come to an agreement with their unions. And once that agreement happens and the strike is over, the stock will pop higher due to short covering. When will that happen? I don't know. I don't have any insider information from Deer or the union. But when it happens, the stock will pop higher. Lastly, when we look at the map, 
pretty much everything is lighting up green, but only a few of these names will sustain the rally and the rebound higher. Not all of them. Today was the tide that lifted all boats. So my question for you is the homework. Which side of the market will sustain the rally? Is it the big cap technology stocks? Is it chips? How about healthcare? How about the inflation trade of financials? energy, industrials, and materials. What about the defensive trade of consumer defensives, REITs, and utilities? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Moving on to the charts analysis, starting with the 30 minutes chart for the SPY. What's going on here? We have a pop higher, a massive gap higher. We had the reverse head and shoulder formation that we talked about last night. The result is a massive gap higher, capturing 438 for support, and it went almost to the resistance of 443. One thing to keep in mind here is the elevated levels in the MACD and the RSI from a 30 minutes perspective. Every time we trade at these levels, we get a pullback. Keyword, a pullback. Not a give up of the rally or loss in momentum. Not anything like that at all. This is a 30 minutes chart. A short scope kind of chart. And therefore, we could have a pullback. It could happen overnight in the futures. It could happen in the morning. But at the end of the day, the momentum is still strong. And the likelihood is the rebound will continue. But the factor driving the market tomorrow will be options expiration. It's all about options. And the likelihood is they want the majority of call and put options holders to hold the bank. The maximum pain theory. So the market goes down in the morning. Then it goes higher in the afternoon. And then by the end of the day, it parks flat. This could be a possibility. It has been a consistent theme during monthly expirations. They park the market pretty much at the flat line after yo-yoing back and forth up and down to shake off call and put options holders. Moving on to the daily chart for the continuous contract for the S&P 500. Now, the writing was on the wall that we're about to have a pop higher. It wasn't hard to predict the pop higher. Why? For one thing, we had a descending sloping line of resistance, which was about to be broken higher. We also had the momentum indicators, the MACD and the RSI, severely oversold, but they were working their way out of the oversold conditions and the bearish negative momentum already topped, meaning that the MACD and the RSI bottomed and therefore the momentum shifts from bearish to bullish. And now we have positive momentum on both the RSI and the MACD indicators. How long will the positive momentum last? Who knows? But for now, you play the game right in front of you. Another sign, a telltale, that the chart was about to pop higher is the formation of a reverse head and shoulder. It was in the thumbnail of the video last night. Here it is, head and shoulder formation, playing out, breaking above the resistance, 4,384.5. Another one, another way to look at it, is the ABC pattern. And if this is indeed the C leg, then we have higher highs to come. Here's another way to look at it. When we zoom in for a little bit, we have a bull flag formation and the bull flag is playing out. No surprise here. There were so many signs heading into the day that this will be a positive day, a pop higher, led by the algos buying and short covering. And the likelihood is the pop will continue at least for now. Moving on to the Qs, the Nasdaq 30 minutes chart. What's going on here? We talked about the saucer bottoming formation. And here it is. We have a pop higher, a massive gap higher, recapturing not just 360 and a half, but 363 and then 365 and a half for support. Is this bullish or bearish? The answer is it is bullish. You captured three lines of support in a single day. Here comes the However, doing so is too much in a single day, and the chart deserves a break. When you look at the RSI and MACD indicators, we are topping here, indicating that a pullback is imminent. The pullback doesn't mean a crash, doesn't mean a loss of momentum, it doesn't mean that the chart needs to trade down for the day tomorrow. The pullback could happen overnight in the futures, and that will do the job. For now, we have a bull flag formation, and the expectations are the chart will work its way higher to beat the resistance of 369. And this is a key number, by the way, because as I said, we have options expiration tomorrow, and the market maker will be in charge of where the chart's gonna trade. When we look at the options grid for the queues, for example, where is the highest open interest for now when it comes to calls? The answer is around 370. We have about 39,000 contracts open. They probably bought these a while back and they're holding the bag. The likelihood is the market maker doesn't wanna park the number, the chart, excuse me, 
above this number. But for now, the other call with the highest, second highest open interest is the 365 already in the money with about 29,000 contracts open. So looking at the calls alone, the assumption is the market maker wants to park the chart below 365 to avoid the obligation of exercising these options. Yet it is not that simple because you have to factor in puts. Let's take a look at puts. What's going on here? The highest open interest is the 365. 70 puts with about 36,000 contracts open and the second in line is the 365 puts with about 34,000 contracts open for now. What will the market maker do to ensure maximum pain? You want to close the chart above 370 and therefore the majority of these puts will expire worthless. The problem is if they park the market above 370 then they're obligated to exercise the 370 calls and therefore the sweet spot is to shake out both call and put options holders for the 370. What does that mean? They move the market higher, closer to 370, and it becomes a battle. It goes higher, it goes lower, in or around 370, and the majority of options open will be closed, booking profits or losses before expiration. So my expectations are the chart could go all the way to the resistance of 369 and that would be the sweet spot for market makers to ensure maximum pain. Moving on to the daily chart for the queues, what's going on here? Another pop higher closing above 15,000 which was resistance now support. Is this bullish or bearish? The answer is it is bullish. Likewise the momentum indicators, the MACD and the RSI all recovering from oversold conditions crossing to positive territory. The volume is cooling down. This is another good sign for the market that the selling perhaps is over. Another way to look at the chart is what if this an ABC pattern? And if this is indeed the C leg, then we have higher highs to come. But most importantly, this is the chart for the NDX, the daily chart. We are still holding the trend for now. It started to look a little shaky, yet after this pop, the confidence level that this trend line will hold just went higher. And here is a chart for the IWM, again popping higher along with the rest of the market, opening a gap. And now we have 223 moving from resistance to support. And the next resistance is 229, although we have a soft resistance level around 227 and a half. When we look at the RSI and MACD indicators on the 30 minutes perspective, the chart is quote unquote overbought. What does that mean? It merits a pullback. This could happen in the futures market, or it could happen in the morning. The chart flushes down, perhaps closing the gap or retesting the support of 223 and then it moves higher. Although I doubt that on an options expiration Friday, for the monthly expiration by the way, we will see a sizable move to the downside after the market already been trading down. What does that mean by the way? It means that since September, the majority of options bought, the majority of winners in the options market have been bears buying puts. So the market maker has the interest to make the majority of these puts expire worthless as much as they can. And therefore they're popping the market higher. Moving on to the Dixie, the dollar index. What's going on here? It appears that we have a top. We have a loss in momentum from the MACD and RSI indicators not definitive yet and we don't have a confirmation for sure that this is indeed the reversal why because the dollar index went down to the support and rebounded to the penny from that level about 93.7 until and unless this support is lost and violated we don't have a confirmation that the dollar indeed topped and remember in my conditions for market bottom we need to have a top in the us dollar and in the 10-year treasury yield, along with climbing the wall of worry. For now, the action in the dollar is keeping gold puzzled. What's up with this guy, the dollar? Is he about to go down or is he being tricky Dixie per usual, playing possum only to pop higher again? And therefore, gold is taking a break here, being the mature guy in the room per usual. You see copper popping higher, silver popping higher, platinum popping higher. But gold, the mature guy in the room, is waiting and waiting and waiting for a confirmation. Moving on to the 10-year yield, what's going on here? Do we have a reversal? The momentum indicators, the MACD and the RSI, are giving us a confirmation that the bullish momentum is peaking. But we don't have a technical confirmation that this is indeed a top in the 10-year treasury yield. And we're not going to have that until the chart closes below 1.5% for the week. If that happens, then we have a confirmation that for now, yields are topping. And therefore, this will favor the NASDAQ, the big cap technology names, 
but specifically the high beta growth and momentum names. But remember, any top in the 10-year treasury yield is transitory. And the reason is when we shift to a weekly chart, the positive momentum on the weekly just started. It could curl down and it turns out to be a fake out, but the likelihood of that happening is slim. The likelihood is we will have a pullback, a consolidation for a little while, and the market will like that. And then the 10-year yield will resume popping higher once again. And what does that mean for the TLT weekly chart? What's going on here? A massive reversal higher. Yet when you look at the MACD, the RSI, we have a confirmation of the negative divergence here. And therefore, whatever pop in the TLT for now, we will assume it is transitory. Moving on to the VIX 4 hours chart, what's going on here? We have a confirmation, the crossing to negative territory on the MACD, creating red impressions on the histogram. This is your confirmation that the VIX is negative for now. And this is also a confirmation that the SPY will pop higher. The moment you saw that in the morning, you knew what the deal is. And for now, the action confirms that the SPY has higher highs to go. When will the VIX bottom? We have a gap at around 16. That could be closed as soon as tomorrow. And then we'll take it from there. But every Friday, it's a battle between bulls and bears. The bulls play crush the VIX Fridays. The bears play let's pop it above 20, meaning the VIX. For now, it appears that the bulls, market bulls, not the bulls for the VIX, market bulls have the upper hand. And here is a daily chart for Apple. The chart is making higher lows. This is positive, but the ultimate confirmation will be closing the week above 145. For now, we will assume that any rebound, any rally in Apple, and the broader market for that matter, by the way, is transitory because the weekly charts remain negative. And here's a 30 minutes chart for Tesla, the souffle. What's going on here? The most interesting stock in the market right now. Teflon stock doesn't care at all. Market up, market down, doesn't matter. Somebody wants this stock higher. There are so many theories here. Among them, of course, that somebody wants to stick it to Dr. Michael Burry, who's probably losing his mind right now on Twitter, tweeting about dementia and Alzheimer, whatever that is, whatever it's going on there. Somebody wants to stick it to Dr. Berry and say, you know what, Michael Berry, how about we change your last name to Michael Berry? And we kind of have a clue who that entity is, by the way, because he already promised before that he will crush all the shorts and everybody who bets against his stock. The irony is, I don't believe that Tesla stock will crash organically, meaning due to a miss in revenue or earnings or bad numbers. That's not going to crash the stock. What's going to crash the stock is Reverend Elon Musk dumping. At some point, he's going to dump and that will be game over right there and then. The cult leader will stab his culties in the back. Surprise, surprise. Of course, this is just one theory. I'm not saying that it is true or not, but we do have many other theories. It has been a consistent theme, by the way, for many quarters now, that Tesla stock rallies heading into earnings but it sells off right after earnings this has been a consistent theme over and over and over and over again but for now when we look at the technicals what's going on here it cannot do anything at all you cannot even play support or resistance or patterns it doesn't matter at the end of the day this is an options market guided chart whatever happens in the options market is moving the chart up or down we already went over the options grid and i told you that the sweet spot for market makers is to park the chart between 750 and 800. For now, the chart is trading above 800, meaning many call options holders will be rewarded. This is not good for market makers. And therefore, the assumption, no guarantees here, but the assumption is market makers will attempt to push the chart down below 800. Moving on to tulips, what's going on here? The candlestick pattern remains bullish. The problem is the momentum indicators are topping already. The RSI and the MACD. We don't have a reversal yet, but look at the MACD. These green columns are getting a little shorter. And if they continue to get shorter and shorter and shorter, then we're going to get closer to the loss of positive bullish momentum. And I do believe that this will be an exchange point from dip buyers who already bought early around 40,000, 42,000, 45,000, and they're setting on a lot of gains. They're going to exchange those gains with the FOMO crowd, and the FOMO crowd will hold the bag. As we see the chart topping and perhaps going back all the way to retest the breakout candle at around 50,000. Lastly, moving on to AMC, this is a 30 minutes chart. We talked about the bullish development on the chart yesterday, the bull flag formation that followed a double bottom formation. This is an extremely bullish pattern. 
and therefore we have the breakout here. And now AMC is trading above 39. What does that mean? In all likelihood, market makers will scramble. We will have a mini gamma squeeze in the trading session tomorrow to ensure that they are neutralizing their delta from the 40 to 45 calls exposure. No guarantees here that the chart will go all the way to 45, but if I had to lay a bet here, I will bet the AMC will pop higher. Moving on to the conclusion of this video, what do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow? We have retail sales, we have the import price index, the Empire State Index, I'll be watching this one, then we have the consumer sentiment index and business inventories. Again, important indicators regarding inflation, but the market will not pay attention to any of these numbers. The market is guided by the technicals for now, and it is guided by options expiration. There are a lot of stupid theories that were floated today that the market is rallying on the heels of a weaker PPI. That is bullshit, absolute garbage. The PPI is actually alarming if you read the details, which I will share with you in the headlines of the day video. The market rebounded higher due to the technicals. They were clear and evident that we were about to have a pop higher. But for now, options expiration will guide the action for tomorrow's session. Anyhow, folks, this is all I got for you for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.